Hi friends, well uh, in the previous lecture we have seen about the moment resisting frames. Now the whole concept of the moment resisting frames was that uh, a frame is some sort of a structure that is built out of amalgamation of beam and column. And essentially for a moment resisting frame, the joints where the beam and column essentially meet, they are moment resisting. That is we have a rigid joint. Then we apply applied loads, be it gravity load, be it lateral load, the beam will take in this load by bending and it will transfer this load to the column by end support reactions and essentially rigid joint which will also transfer the moment, right? But let's say that we cannot build some sort of a rigid joint. Then how can we transfer this load falling on the maybe the beam of the frame? How can we transfer this load? And bracing or the brace frames here it comes to our escape. And the whole concept of brace frames is like this that brace frames are some sort of a truss structure, right? Because the joints are now not rigid, now not fully rigid, they are somewhat hinged, right? Not exactly hinged, but somewhere close to being a hinge connection. And if we can provide some sort of a bracing what we essentially do is that we resist the lateral loads because now what we make is that we make the structure somewhat triangulated. Now I will try to elaborate what I just said about press frames of uh, drawing some figures on the board. Now let's say that I have some kind of a frame like this which has some sort of a hinge connection and a roller connection. Now suppose that this joint and this joint, say this is joint 1 and say this is joint 2, they are not rigid. If I apply some kind of a lateral load, then essentially as they are not rigid, this frame will deform excessively and after a point obviously it will collapse. Now how can we avoid this excessive deformation or impending collapse? The very simple solution is to either make this joint rigid so that it can transfer whatever loads that falls to the column and the column that transfers again to the beam and then again to the column and like this to the ground or provide some kind of a bracing system and make the structure behave like a truss. It's not a wholly idealized truss but this uh, as when we provide the bracing system the structure somewhat behaves like a truss. Now, Essentially, if we provide a bracing system, say a system like this wherein I have one diagonal here and the other diagonal here, then essentially the structure, when lateral load is applied, the structure will not deform that much, right? And because what we have made is, we have made the structure stiffer by introducing this diagonal braces. Now let us see, let us uh, try to draw some figures and let us try to uh, elaborate this, let, let me try to elaborate this concept further. So, for example, I have some kind of a frame like this, say, and I provide cross bracing. Now, when I apply the lateral load, after deformation, the frame will be, let's say, like this. Right. So, essentially, this is one of my diagonals, this is one of my diagonals. So this diagonal will be under some sort of a tensional force and this diagonal will be some sort of a compressional force, right? So essentially by cross bracing the structure, what we are doing is that we are, we are, we are making this load transfer through this diagonal braces, right? Because of this, this load will be transferred by the diagonal braces to this point, right? and also by this point. So essentially by this diagonal braces we are making the structure stiffer and hence deformation will not be that much. We can also use a single diagonal brace. This was an example of X bracing or cross bracing X or cross braces. Now we can also use single diagonal braces which will look some kind of a thing like this wherein I have a frame like this say and I have a single diagonal let's say and this is my hinge connection and this is say my roller connection. So if I apply some kind of lateral load, the structure will obviously deform and the deformation will be say like this and the diagonal say will be like this. 
So this diagonal will have some kind of a tensional force. If I apply some kind of a lateral load in this direction, obviously this diagonal will be under compressional force. And this type of bracing is called single diagonal bracing. Also we have other types of bracing systems like knee bracing, like V bracing, like K bracing and essentially I will draw each of this. Let us uh, draw a three story building and brace this in different types. Number one we can have a bracing system which we call as uh, I should say V bracing. The V bracing system looks like this. Right. Then we also have a bracing system which is called K bracing. The K bracing system essentially looks like this. And we have also a bracing, this is so, this is V bracing, this is K bracing and the knee bracing system that we have seen in cross analysis also looks like some kind of a thing like this. These are my knee braces. And what it basically does, we can see that it reduces the effective length of the columns also. And essentially the column can resist bending better because its, if it's effective length is reduced, essentially it will take in more loads. So these are the various types of bracing systems we have. And essentially what it does is that number one, it reduces the effective length and number two, it can resist the lateral loads by transferring, by transferring